Hi, second graders, and welcome back to our unit on changing landforms. Today, we are going to be starting chapter three, and we're going to be doing lesson one, which is an introduction to maps. We are going to be doing activities one through three today, but we are going to cut out activity four because we do not have the resources to do that one. Okay, so we explained that water caused tiny pieces of rock to break off of the cliff. But we know a big change happened to the cliff because the flagpole is now closer to the edge. So our chapter three question that we're going to be focusing on is how did the recreation center's cliff erode without the director noticing? And remember erode means like tiny pieces of rock breaking off. Um, again, so it's not like giant, giant pieces. It's, it's a smaller change. Since we're focusing on big changes to landforms, we'll become familiar with tools geologists often use when they study landform changes, and that tool is a map. So we're going to examine several maps and create our own maps. Maps might even, or maps might help us understand what happened to the recreation center's cliff. Um, so before we go ahead and actually go back to um, our book to look at some maps, I want you guys to think about what you already know about maps and how could maps help us understand what happened to the cliff. So take a second to pause this video and you can answer the question by writing it down in your packet. You can talk to somebody at home or you can just think about the answer in your head. And um, some things that I would say is that maps can help us see how close the flagpole is to the edge of the cliff. Um, and another thing that we could do is if we looked at an old map of the cliff, it could also help us to see um, if the cliff changed from back in the day to now, and if so, by how much. Hi guys, and welcome back to the second part of lesson one. We are gonna be focusing on maps and the handbook of land and water, which we have already read previously. So we're gonna go ahead and go back into this book to look at a couple of different maps. So remember that reference books are used to find specific information and we're gonna use this book to learn how to interpret different maps. So first I'm gonna read page five. When we read, we can visualize what the text is saying by creating a picture in our minds. This helps us better understand what we are reading. So while I'm reading this page, I want you guys to really be trying to visualize or think about it get a picture in your head of what you're seeing as I'm reading. What does it look like on a map? Here are some tall mountains near the water. What would this place look like on a map? In order to visualize what it would look like, imagine you are a bird. Fly up higher and higher. Fly over the mountains and the water so that you can look down on them from above. So I want you to take a second to describe what you might see if you were a bird flying over the mountains and looking down on it from above. So you can answer this question by writing it down in your packet. You can quickly talk to somebody at home or think about it in your head. So go ahead and pause this video and answer this question really quick. So now I'm going to read page six. The photo shows what it would look like if you were a bird flying high above these mountains. Some people call this a bird's eye view. To get a better idea of what the mountains and the water look like on a map, keep flying higher and higher. In order to visualize this, you need to fly all the way into space. Here's a photo of what, here's a photo that was taken looking down at Earth from space. It shows the same mountains that were on the picture on page five. Even from up in space, you can see the white snow on the mountains. You can see the blue water around the land. This photo was taken from a spacecraft looking down at Earth. It shows the Olympic Mountains. So I want you guys to take a second to think about what is similar about what you visualized and what you see here, and also what is different. So I'll go ahead and give you a second to pause the video and you can answer the question using one of those three different methods. When I'm thinking about similarities and differences, I thought that the water was still going to look blue because it was blue in the picture on page five, which is over here. Um, I also expected there to be some white because again, on page five, we see that there's snow on top of those mountains up on the top. Some things that I think were different is I didn't expect to I mean, in this picture, you can't really see the mountain peaks at all. 
And the only way you know that they're the mountains is from the snow. So something that's different is I thought that the mountains would look more jagged from the bird's eye view than they actually do. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and read page seven. Here's a map of those same mountains. A map is not a photo. It is a picture people create. A map shows the land and water in simple ways. Sometimes the colors are different on a map than they are in real life. This makes things easier to see and find. Most maps have something called a key or a legend. A map key is a guide to the map. It helps you figure out what each part of the map shows. So again, this is still a map showing the Olympic Mountains, but it, instead of a photo like the last picture, this is a map. So we're gonna talk about the map's features, including the title, labels, and key. Using the map key, we can locate very high land, high land, low land, water, and cities and towns. So if I'm looking at the map over here, I see the title of the map up at the very top, which says map of the Olympic Mountains. I also see the map key, and this is gonna help us figure out what we are looking at on the map. So I can see that this brown dot is showing very high land. So when I look on the map, I'm seeing that this area right here, right kind of where it says Olympic Mountains, that's gonna be really high area. So that's probably going to be like the top peaks of my mountains. I can see that this lighter brown color is the high land, which seems to be in a circle around that really high land. So again, those are probably our mountains, but maybe lower down. Um, I also see that this green shows lowland. So again, all this area around the mountains are lowland, which I'm assuming are flat. And I also see that water is blue. So all of this area surrounding our lowland is water. And I also see cities and towns will be represented by a gray dot or gray area. So the this area over here, I would assume, are some sort of cities and towns near the Olympic Mountains. So you guys are going to, we're going to look at page eight, and we're going to visualize what you would see to the left, right, and in front of you if you were standing where the red mark is on the map right here. On the last few pages, we looked at a photo and visualized what the place would look like on a map. Now let's go the other direction. Look at the red mark on the map which is right here. Can you visualize what it would be like to stand in that place where the mark is? What would you, what would you, what, oh my goodness, would you be on the land or in the water? What would you see? Sorry, I could not talk there for a second. So I want you guys to just take a second. You don't need to answer this in the packet, but I want you to just take a second to think about if you were standing there, what would you see? So page nine shows how it would look if you were standing where the red mark is. So you can see that you're overlooking, it looks like you're pretty high up, um, not seeing a bunch of water, but you are seeing some more of those mountain peaks. So we're going to explore the other maps in the book and we're gonna think about how they are similar, similar to and different from the map that we were just discussing. So I'm gonna have you guys pause this video and you are going to have to go to the YouTube video for the handbook of land and water. And then in your packet, you can answer this question. So again, you can use any map that you see in that handbook of land and water. There are so many to choose from. Here's an example over here that you can use. Um, and then you will join us back for the next part of our lesson. All right, guys, so we are on our last activity for lesson one today for chapter three, and we're gonna be visualizing landforms from above. So we've been visualizing what a place might look like from above, and we're gonna to continue to practice describing landforms and what they might look like from a bird's eye view. And a bird's eye view is just another word for looking at it from higher up, kind of like in the picture that we see over here to the left. Okay. So we're gonna imagine that we're flying high above each of these three different places. So in photo A, it looks like it's some sort of a valley with maybe a river in the middle. Photo B, it looks like something I might see at the beach. And then photo C looks like the mountains, maybe something that we could even see at Rocky Mountain National Park, which is in Colorado. So take a minute to just imagine flying above each of these places and what a map might look like. So if I were looking down at this place from far above, I would see that there's some low land and some water. I know it's low land because I don't see any mountains or any big hills here, 
um, and then I can see the water which is running directly through the middle of the two. So I would see lowland on both sides of the water and again like I just said I do not see any highland here. So I want you guys to take a second to pause this video and I want you to visualize looking down at the place in photo B thinking about what I was just thinking about. So looking for, is there high land that we see? Is there water? Is it low land? Um, so go ahead and pause the video and just get an image of your head of what this might look like from above. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing with this photo. So we're gonna visualize looking down at the place in photo C. Again, thinking about, do we see high land? Do we see very high land? Do we see low land, water, and so on. So next we're going to look at the landform photos that we just saw along with some of the maps and think about how to figure out which map matches each photo. So first we're going to talk about which map matches photo A, which was the first one that I talked about. Okay, so photo A we see in this left corner over here. And remember that some things I'm looking out for is I see there are two areas of low land and there's water running through the middle. So when I look at the picture of map one, um, I do see water and I do see low land, but remember that photo A, there's low land on both sides. So I know that map one cannot go with photo A. When I look at map two, I'm seeing more of that brown shaded area, which remember that that brown shows really high land and there is not any really high land in photo A. So I know that map two cannot go. So it must be map three. But just to double check, I do see that there's a low land on both sides of the water because I see the green from the map. And I also see that water running through the middle, which matches up with our photo. So I know that photo A matches up with map three. So now you're gonna use what you visualize to figure out which map goes with the place in photo B and which map goes with the place in photo C. So go ahead and pause this video and just take a minute to try and match up which one goes with which. And then we'll quickly discuss it together right now. So if I'm looking at photo B, I see that there's water and I'm noticing that it looks like it's mostly low land around the water. I don't see any hills. I don't see any mountains. So when I look at my two maps, I can see the water right here, and I also see the green that's showing low land, so I know that photo B and map one match up. So let me just double check that photo C and map two match up. So again, photo C, I'm gonna be looking for high land because I can see those mountains in the background. So actually very high land. If I look at map two, I can see that there's a lot of very high land because I can see the brown around it. So I know that photo C is also going to match up with map two. So our key concept from today is that maps show where water and land are and where different landforms are. All right, and I look forward to seeing you guys back here for lesson two.